Welcome to Self Perfected. Can I just tell you this quick? Oh, can I just tell you this quick story? I just thought it was really cute. Like we were out there the other night or the other day, like doing something with the animals, and I was with Seneca, and one of our our cat who just had kittens runs by, right, or just comes over or whatever, and Seneca goes, "Hey, mama." <laughs> I just thought it was so cute. She's like, "Hey, mama." <laughs> that is cute. That's awesome. Uh, hey, everybody. Hey, mamas so, and papas. It made me so, think of that because I was calling Christine C mom. She's no longer C God. She's been upgraded to C mom. Awesome. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like to think of mothers as God. You know. Uh, well, I used to call Megan's uh, C girl. Cause we had this running joke with each other about like her, when, when, when she first came to Texas and got like boots and all that. So we were joking about being a cowboy cowgirl stuff. And I was like, um, I can't call you C mom because Christine, but also it's like, uh, in that context, it'd be like cow mom. So I'm like, cause <laughs> Megan's a mom now. So I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to say cow, like imply that. So I have to figure out maybe, maybe some people, maybe in the comments, somebody can help us figure out. Yeah, what's a good nickname name. for Megan? For Megan, because uh, I know everyone has nicknames for her, but I need like a special kind of nickname. Um, you need a special nickname. Yeah, she likes she likes boots. Okay, uh, she likes cats, Bengal cats. She's Megan got boots. red hair. She does have red hair. There's red hair. Yeah. Uh, so just just giving you some ideas, right? How about Guess Meg boots? Know. Meg boots. Megan I'm boots. Not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Meg like mom, pu- like pussy. Meg boots. mom, like mega mom. Mega mom, yeah, mega mom. Mega mom. That's mega good. <laughs> Megatron. Megatron. That's it. That's just call her Megatron. I don't know if you can call her Megatron because <laughs> that's, that's what we named our male duck, and so a lot of people have an association with a green duck that that's is too small. Yeah, it's too small to be able to to have sex with a big female duck. So he just. He just okay. hangs out and eats all the food. Well, and I don't have it in me to kill him. <laughs> oh, invite me over. <laughs> I'll kill you. Yeah, we can make so. some pate. I mean, like, I could kill him, but, like, it's winter time. Like, I'm not trying to be outside. You have cold. to do a whole process. Yeah. Yeah, sure, exactly. Sure. Exactly. I don't sure. know. I, I was one of our neighbors. He's really cool. He's like a hearty guy. I don't know where he's from, but his wife is from Estonia. And she just. They're just hardcore. They're awesome. And um, he's telling me how simple it is to kill these chickens. Because I was telling him, like, oh, yeah, we put a cone, you know, and I was, like, telling him what we did with you, Cameron. He's like, no, you just need a stump, a stump and a hatchet. I'm like, oh. He's like, yeah, just pick up the, pick them up by the feet, lay them across, and just chop their head off. So, But I don't have a stump right now. You could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I have done that, like, with a rooster I just wanted to get rid of. But it, yeah. but I like to drain the blood and all that stuff when we're gonna slaughter him. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. you're gonna deal with all that blood in their body. I mean, I guess it might drain out. I'm not claiming to be an expert. Okay, but then does that blood? So if I put him on a stump, chop the head off, and now the blood's all over. Does that now attract animals like coyotes and stuff? Well, maybe, maybe I don't know. But it would definitely attract flies and little bugs and critters. And things maybe like I that. should do it in the winter then. Yeah, but you could just like raise the day off or something. Megatron. But but uh, do you want me to live stream it on the podcast? Uh if you want our whole situation. <laughs> Turn my to laptop platform. out with me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, like when we slaughtered the pig, I wasn't interested in doing a video of him shoot of us shooting the pig or whatever. He said, but he said that's the one thing he doesn't let people film. Not film, but he's like, don't post it if you film it because he's like, post whatever you want, but don't post that because you'll get like your account taken down if you do that. Oh, yeah. mm, got yeah. it yeah yeah you just have to post first about like twerking and like <laughs> sexual stuff if you twerk on the duck's head while you're killing it in I front think. of children yeah in front of children yes. while so i'm dressed drag, like a woman yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well hang on we don't know what a woman when i'm wearing you a know, dress what is a woman <laughs> what is that <laughs> Yo, after after witnessing Jessica Guys. deliver a baby, I know what a woman is because <laughs> any of these people who go, oh, a man could be a woman, and this could be a woman. And it's like just because you're a woman matter. who's pretending to be a man doesn't mean men can have kids that can be pregnant. 
Well, Cam, like, I saw you sent that video. I, I just read the headline. I didn't actually get to watch it. But it was oh, like, it was so stupid. Don't even watch it. Don't even watch it. It was it, it said somebody could be like a man could someone was, it was arguing like that some, a man it was could like be pregnant, but it was right? some some bill that was trying to be passed or whatever. And it had to do I, I don't know what the bill specifically was, but it had to do with unborn children and then it was domestic abuse and I, I don't know exactly what the bill was but it had something to do with any of that and like so the people opposing it were saying that somehow it would overvalue the unborn child and hurt victims of abuse so maybe it was something to do with like abortion i'm not sure okay but uh but he the the councilman or whoever this was like in this local government or whatever it was was saying um he was asking each person who was for and against it like can a woman be pregnant or sorry can a man get pregnant and the guy who was for the bill was like no and then like when the woman comes up who was against it she was like councilman yes and she's like and he starts he asked her another question she was like i don't want to go into the, i don't want to participate in the bigotry of this question he's like well i'm and, and then the the other council person or whatever he goes objection relevance and he's like well this is a bill that says that's specifically referring to pregnant women so i think it's relevant to ask the person who's against it, what is a woman and can men get pregnant? You know, because, yeah, because he's like, I don't, because he even, he kind of didn't articulate it, but he mentioned this point about like, what if there's a domestic violence situation where there's a pregnant man? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what, how are you going to deal with all this stuff? Right. So, um, that's so crazy that that's what they're focused on in the courts right now. When meanwhile, like we're on the verge of a huge banking collapse and like the money system's all fucked up and like kids have all time like worst I, score. I like how like math. five or six banks collapse and we're like, we're on the verge of a banking collapse because that's literally how everyone's like, come on. I mean, five or six major banks collapsing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just, it, it, so if it's my bank, no, I know, then but it's, that's then it's actually real. how people feel. Yeah. That's actually yeah, how people yeah. feel. It's like, we're like at war with Russia and China, all this stuff. We're like, I mean, come on, but we haven't been annihilated by nuclear weapons yet. I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> we're, like we're, that's coming though. Come on. When's it happening? Yeah. You're like, God Did you see damn, that thing like, too with this, uh, like a drone got hit by a Russian plane or yeah. Did I you see that? about it today. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see all the details of it. I just wonder if you guys did, but. I did not. No, not at all. Actually, oh. it, it's, it's funny. Cause like the, the banking collapse thing, like, <sighs> It's funny. Okay, so I made I made a post yesterday or the day before, whatever, and a bunch of a, a couple of people, but <laughs> a couple of people commented on it, and it was like it, it was just funny that something that I thought was funny that Christine had sent me, right? And it was just like talking about um, like it was this guy rapping, which apparently John Stephen has met, right? Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it was this guy rapping about like uh, being a homemaker, you know. And I thought it was cool. I was like, that's catchy and, you know, at least uplifting, you know, for, for a rap. And it, it's a catchy rap that's uplifting where, where most raps, like, I guarantee you, if I would have posted a video of a guy rapping about, like, bitches in the club and, you know, throwing money and, like, shooting people up and all this, everybody would be like, yo, that's a hot song, you know, or, or they wouldn't comment at all, right? But because it was about, like, being a homemaker and all this and obviously he makes some comments about like liberalism and conservatism and anti-feminism or whatever um like people are like i am upset by this I'm rap. Just like, upset with the anti-feminist part like, right <laughs> like okay i don't <laughs> first of all you're a man yeah <laughs> and you're upset about it what the fuck yeah <laughs> but it's so uh, funny too because um yeah. with the feminists like 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 the whole feminist movement was for feminine like equal rights for women and now they've just gotten totally played by men pretending to be women like you know what i mean it's like with even now we're arguing for equal rights for men (laughs) yes as women (laughs) to be pretending to be women but their (laughs) rights are superseding the women right it's like but okay they were they were already men so don't they already have the upper hand? But now they're women. But women had equal rights. They have now the who are women don't have the double equal right. double upper hand. So so okay, like a reverse so, double agent kind of situation, right? One thing that I was looking at within that was because one of the comments is like, um, you know, this 
uh, has like everything was great in the 1950s vibe. And I was like, okay, but actually, and it's so funny that he said specifically 1950s. First of all, that's not an argument, but okay. <laughs> right. I'm sure it was meant to make me feel bad or whatever, but I was like, I'm. Like, oh, because of the implication of racism was still around. Right. So yeah, if it was so great. But if like, you ask anybody who's, who's actually studied black history, like act like not the shit that you get in school or whatever, but yeah, anyone right. who's actually studied like black communities and everything, actually for a black community or black family, things were objectively better. Namely, namely that only 9% of kids uh, that were black in the 1950s grew up without their father in the home versus today it's over 55% kids grow up without their, their father in the home. Right. And it's like, and I think it was like, even it's even worse for like unmarried, but that's like, okay, just that person, they didn't get married, but the father still lives with their, their children. So it's like, okay, that's a little different, but specifically, okay. If what would be different, see, here's, here's the, the super interesting thing to me. What would be different is this in the 1950s, you were looked at as a second class citizen. And I'm like, okay, you and your friends may have looked at me as a second class citizen, but I had my family. We had black owned businesses. We had black communities. Like people looked after each other. People actually cared. There was, there was, it was yeah. different as far as the individual living in those times versus maybe how they were perceived, how they were portrayed in the media. Who gives a shit about that stuff though? And, and like, but the other thing too is, um, you're also like choosing how can i explain it to identify with that view well no i just mean like like obviously like the thing that always comes to my mind is the image of like the water fountains where it's like whites versus you know only colors whatever different drinking fountains but it's like um so obviously that's fucked but how can i explain it it's like couldn't black people go and make their own water fountains in an area like in other words what was this area that how can i explain it it's like okay it's like complaining about the critical race theory shit in schools why are your kids in school right why are you going to that place like right. um and you know i'm sure there's context to it but um you know you look at cultures and when you have differences in cultures people they they don't like things that are different than what they they're programmed with yeah so there's this idea that it's like about the dignity of the person or something but it's really just about the fear that people have of being a part of different cultures because the black people didn't want to be with the white people just as much as the white people didn't want to be with black people right like it it, it went both ways it doesn't justify someone who has some level of power or say in reality abusing someone who doesn't obviously but you just don't look at all of the context of it and so that being said let's just get rid of that part that doesn't right. exist anymore what where do you see that anywhere where do you see anywhere whites versus blacks drinking fountains i don't know i don't see that like if a if, if there's a drinking fountain and somebody put a sign that said whites only that person would probably be killed. Yeah. They would lose their job. They would never, you know what I mean? Like they'd have to go in hiding. Yeah. If you put one that said blacks only, people would be like, yeah. So, okay. So in other words, we're done with all of that. So when you say, oh, you're giving me 1950s vibes. Do you think we're, where in the rap song did it say, and we need to, you know, those, those drinking fountains with the whites and the colors, we need those too. Like he didn't fucking say that. Right. He said, we need the the women in the home like whatever those points were he never said right, right, right. and all the other bad shit like right. so it's just it's not an argument to be like oh you're you know it's like um you know i really think people should eat healthy you're like oh or or, or what was a better example like um it's like uh it'd be like if you said okay p children shouldn't use like cell phones they shouldn't be on apps so much mm -hmm. you know oh oh you mean like the stone ages? Oh, so you're saying we should all like, we shouldn't even have electricity. That's what you're saying. Oh, we, should, oh. we, should, we should be like, you know, living out, be like, you know, yabba without, dabba you know, homes and like, you're like, and like, what? like 
just because there was a period of time where that was happening doesn't mean I'm suggest it's it's like the person can't process information. They're just reacting emotionally to the point. Right. So they're not really looking at it. And it's just a way of trying to shut it down specifically to make people feel ashamed because it's like, oh, see, you're a racist. You just want everybody racist. That's what it that, is. You're racist. That's it. That's it. It's like people will just use that as their argument, like where they can't look past. Um, somebody at, at the clubhouse yesterday was saying um, how someone was just bringing up, they, they went, they were playing basketball and uh, someone who just arrived on the court was saying like, oh, this thing about Kanye. Oh man. Like, you know, way back when he was saying he was wearing the white lives matter shirt. Right. And uh, they're like, oh, what do, you, what do you guys think about it? And he was like, he couldn't get past. It was just like that triggered him. And then he couldn't look past anything else other than that, because uh, he was saying like, I thought it was a, a funny troll. Like you're going to wear a black lives matter shirt. Why can't I wear a white lives matter shirt too? Like, oh, isn't that I'm, obviously what it is? Right. It's like, come on. And, but people and, actually go to, Oh, Kanye West hates black people. And he's it's like KKK what? and all this stuff. It's like, but what about that time back when, you know, he was like, George Bush hates black people and all. Yeah. And, and he's like, changed saying Beyonce now. wasn't getting, it's like, he was doing the same shit. It was just he, whatever you weren't supposed to do. Right. He likes to say what you're not supposed to say. Right. Right. Hey, hey. But they but can't. Like, yeah. It's like people can't process beneath the surface. Where it's just like, mm, and he's racist and he's bad. Oh, dude. And if you like him, you're racist too. It's the same thing that we saw going on in the media for like the last three years. Really, well, actually more than that. But like really obviously, I'm just like, oh, you don't want to get a vaccine? Trumper. <laughs> racist. Oh, don't want to wear a mask? <laughs> yeah but you'll wear a kkk mask won't you like wait what no what? <laughs> no it, I, I, it's 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 this tendency though then that, that we'll have when we're like wow that's like idiotic to think like that it's like you can see how it's, it's stupid when people are thinking at that level yeah but then we'll go into this our another version of that which said well how the hell do we just wake everyone up like what what is the one thing we can say that can just get everybody awake and so it's another form right. of this. Like there's got to be some word for it where it's like a it's like a mental cop out. It's it's rhetoric. People people respond to rhetoric and then mm. it's like and then you think that rhetoric is actual intelligence or understanding. Mm. It's not. Right. Cuz cuz the real understanding is then it's one on one grassroots influence one person at well, a time or smoke it's, it's real time education. Person. But That's also the, not not yeah. not only is you're right but it's it's also well, it's what you're going to say, Drake. It's like, it's getting the person to then rebuild their, yeah. so it's, it's not, it's not even just grassroots to say the one thing mm -hmm. it's to sell the person on, Hey, you have to really re-educate yourself. Yeah. You it's, know? it's like, you have to dismantle these constructs in your mind that you've accepted. No one readily. can do that for you. No one can do that for you. Exactly. Exactly. Like there was like another if, angle of that. A comment though that I think it wasn't just the racist thing I think it was also talking about how in the 1950s for women like women were in the household but they were slaves to their to their yeah. families yeah obviously. you know what I mean not like just in this blacks like you know what I mean I don't think it was just talking about that it was just talking it was also yeah, yeah. referring to the black thing was the undercurrent it was the subtext so right, right 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 yeah. right but at the same time it's like the same it's the same thing though same. it's like yeah. you've been you've been uh brainwashed to think that that was slavery which okay may at that time it's like okay there could be the point of like you didn't have a good relationship with your husband to a certain sense where like he did kind of look at you in a certain way, like you were the slave and you didn't feel, I don't know. Some people like that's how they explain like with their grandmothers at, at that time period. It's like they yeah. didn't feel appreciated for all the things that they did. However, with like the kind of the current, how we're kind of redefining relationships, it's like you were just missing principles and agreements within right. your relationship to actually like, right know the value that you were bringing to the home because what did you just do you just reacted and then went and got a job for another man see this is the problem. <laughs> hold on this is the problem with that i agree with what you're saying but the problem with the way they were thinking about it is the man had it so good right <laughs> so they were just seeing the man they were playing a superiority game they're playing the man was superior the woman was inferior and so the because people were still accepting that superior inferior point the system was able to go 
So we need to equalize women with men, right? We need to make them like the men. Right, right. But not realizing the man was a slave to his job. Right, it was alpha. The man was a slave to his <laughs> masculinity, his community, whatever the points were. So yeah, the woman was inferior, but the man was also inferior. But the yeah. trick was to get everyone to think the man, the woman should be just like the man, not realizing what you were saying, Christine, which is like, okay, no, it's about agreements because the principles within the relationship between the man and the woman, that also would have to carry over into the man and his relationship to the world and so forth. Because what, right. like where people, where women were just staying at home, slaving away and the guys were just going partying all day. That's what was <laughs> happening. Oh, you get to have so much fun. Smoking. That's what they make it sound like in Mad Men. You know, right, they yeah. like they worked do, in the but city. It's like the 1950s and like... were probably the most <laughs> industrious fucking time in, in our country's history, I'm assuming. You know what I mean? The, like all of the, the technology, the beginning of all of that, you know, a lot of like automation coming really to the forefront and so forth. Like to act you know, like they were just hanging out, playing all day. It was just, it's just silly. What's really yeah. interesting about that is like, so... Um, you know, considering like the bank collapses and all of this, right? Like, how do they get people to uh, go and spend more money or acquire more debt and all that? It's like, send them to war, right? Start a war and that will create a lot of debt because people will have to buy weapons or whatever. And then people feel like this duty, whatever the case is, or, or they're, they're lacking a job and then they got to go out and serve in this war, right? Well, what happened just before the 1950s? Like we had a major world war, which required a lot of men to go out into the world, which then all of a sudden, well, we need women to then take their place. And then, oh, we need a place to put all these kids. So it, was, it took all these women out of the homes, took all the kids away from their mothers. Because prior to that, that wasn't really the thing that you daycare was not that popular before that. It really right. wasn't, right. you know? And, and so it was like taking all these kids out of their homes into a daycare and all these mothers into this working environment. And then when the men come back, it's like, oh, well, listen, we've been paying these women less than you or whatever the case was, right? Like we've been paying these women. We already have a workforce. We don't really need you. Your value is devalued because we already have a labor force, right? Right. And then like, then getting everybody like, oh yeah. And we have equal rights for women because, well, listen, we have way more people to pull from regardless of whether they were being paid less or not, which may, it may have been really the case that they were being paid less, but it's like you devalue the labor force anyway, because if you have so much labor, you don't need that much. Right. And, and so then it's like a whole thing where it's like, now let's get people to all agree to not go back to what they used to do. And that's where we're at today, where it's like, and women should be in the workforce too. It's like, yeah, but look at the consequence of that. You abandon your children. Literally, you're abandoning your children. Like, if if it's the case that you have enough money coming in where both parents could stay home, wouldn't you want that? Right. Like, who wouldn't want that, right? And then also, if it's the case that you can do that where it's only one parent can stay home, wouldn't you want, like, as a man... For myself, the decision I've made is I'm going to gift that to my wife. Like it, it would be so fucking selfish of me if, okay, one of us has to go out there and, and do the work and one of us gets to stay home. And I know there's a lot of work involved with staying home, but hmm, which one would I rather do? I'd definitely take, you know, staying home. But also, who's going to be better suited to be there with the kids? Obviously, it's going to be her. So it's not even like a who would I what would I want to do? It's what makes the most fucking sense practically, you know. You know what I was thinking too is like the the perception that people have of 1950s being a housewife is like everything looks exactly the same. Do you guys have that picture in your mind where it's like every house looks the same? They have the same basic furniture, the same appliances, everything's the same. Yeah. So it's like this subconscious point of the woman's just the slave just in the assembly line just every mm -hmm. day versus there's like a lot of creativity there. Yeah. Which, which may not have existed back then. I, Cause I'm just telling that's my image I have, but yeah. th that's not where we're at right now. So it's, it's like the principle of investigate all things and keep what is best. Okay. Let's uh let's keep the part where the woman has a creative 
you know, expression and can take responsibility for things in the home and the children and their education and so forth. But let's get rid of the drinking fountains and, you know, like the woman is inferior to the man thing. And the man and coming like, home and slapping up his woman. Right. Because yeah. he just wants to put his feet up and watch football. Like, I don't right. do that. Like when I come home after I'm at the office or whatever, I'm outside like building a fence or making like right now I haven't started on the project yet, but I'm making some egg racks, like wooden egg racks that are stackable it's because we have so many freaking eggs. Right. And we don't want to just, I just keep them in buckets. We have like buckets. You know, and then like uh, one of our neighbors uh, gave us a whole like like a hundred like of those paper cartons that the eggs come yeah, on. Yeah. I don't know where he got them from, but he just has them. So he gave me a whole bunch of those because we've been giving them eggs. You know, so point being, I'm not coming home going like, oh, I just want to watch my football. Ah, shut the kids up. You Imagine know, like, camera doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't even have a TV. Would It'll for. be hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, you just the internet sucks at home. So we're not watching Netflix. We don't have net. I don't even have it. Yeah. We're not watching Hulu, Disney Plus. Yeah. Whatever the things are, right? It, Our kids aren't watching. It's funny people like trying to um peer into your life and be like, oh man, sounds like sounds like the, the kids' lives would be hard because they'd be you gotta get them to read and all this. Like, you don't even fucking know. You don't even know like just how. Like, like people make these assumptions when they just look at like, oh, your kids can read. Wow. I, I probably wouldn't do that to my kids. That's terrible. You, you're robbing them of a childhood or whatever. It's like, what? Do you, do you realize so, these kids are like, first off, they're capable. But of I would put my kids in school for eight hours a day. Okay. So, so this is such a really huge point. Like, we haven't, I don't know the last time we brought this up on the podcast, but I know we've got a lot of new people coming in. I have a lot of people like who come to our clubhouse who listen to this and they're like, wow, this is like awesome. Like they're, they're down with it. This is a huge, huge point people is um, we're really only like in order for us to achieve the ultimate goal, creating a world that's best for all, changing the money system, changing politics, changing education. We really only need like 1% of people. And so a lot of the people that you'll talk to on the average day who leave some snide fucking comment on Drake's thing going, oh, I can get 1950s vibes. And it's just some like fucking single old man who has no fucking testosterone. He's just trying to pick a fight online. It's like, don't worry about that person. Some I know Drake, I know Drake, you're not worried. What was that? Some of them are married. <laughs> they're just really. They're okay, feminist. well, they're, they're probably really not feminine. getting laid. So, yeah. And so it's like they're just looking for some place to go get their fucking energy fix. So for all you in the community, especially when you're standing up more and you're going out and you're having clubhouses, you're going to events, you're talking to people, you're running your office, you're doing all that stuff. You might also be posting stuff online. You're going to get a lot of just people who just want to fucking nitpick. And the thing to just keep in mind with all of that is we're only looking for 1%. Now here's an important caveat though. We never know who the 1% is going to be. And so like, I'll get some remarks from people or comments or i'll meet people at a clubhouse and i'm shaking their hand i'm like okay like i've I've known enough now because i've been doing it long enough that i never know who the person's going to be who actually gets it and they're like dude i like you guys i want to be part of this the most enthusiastic person is usually not the one that's yeah 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 yeah. i'm trying to so so i want to just finish my statement that i was going to say about like Mm. Um, you know, people think they have this perception of how to teach kids reading and they think of it as very frustrating. And what we're doing is so radically different where it's just like, it's so I, simple. I, the kids I didn't, love it. I didn't teach my kids to read. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. That's so cool. Think about it. Like teaching is like this didactic process. It's like, you have to like do some you have to have some knowledge and you're trying to explain something or whatever. And it's like, our process a, is more of huh? a whiteboard. You need a chalk and some yeah, white, and you know, like, like, ours is just more of like a, Oh, like a guidance here, like a correction there. Like, you know, and we just use tech material. It's hard for people to understand that, but that's where it comes from. People say, Oh no, it's your parenting. It's your, this, it's your, that. It's like, even that is only possible because of the, the tools. Right. Right. If we didn't have the tools, techno tutor and doing our DIP process and all that and studying the material and the principles and all that and applying that. It, but if we didn't use techno tutor, our kids wouldn't be able to process what we're saying. And if yeah. I didn't use it, I wouldn't be able to understand it. Um, 
can I can I share a thing real quick? Because I really wanted to share this on here and might as well do it now. Okay. Can you make it uh, possible? I'm making it possible. Make it, it is, possible. It is made possible now. Well, made let me, possible uh, by me. Let me get the things pulled up. Audrey, uh, getting some 1950s vibes from you. you like you're commercials? the man and you're going to make it okay man. for someone else to do something. Listen, I am. You know what's interesting? Okay, try to think of like, what would a house, what would a common household look like in the 1860s? Okay. Do you have like just a set thing? Or is it like, it could be like this or like that or, or whatever? I got two I got two images in my mind. Okay, well, what, Getting what some kind of schi- can... schizophrenic vibes right now. Bipolar <laughs> vibes. What are the two images that you have for the 1860s? <laughs> so watch someone get triggered by that. <laughs> it's um, dark. <laughs> okay, one is like Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. Like yeah, Pioneer yeah. Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because I'm from Minnesota and that okay. was like my fucking ancestors. Yeah. And then the other is like City Vibes and like Squalor. Okay. Like, like yeah. kids what in the fucking what, what alleyways. Like 1860s, right? 1860s. Well, like, hang on, like hang on. Hand. This is some Civil War time, though. Yeah, Civil War time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got three images. Okay, so, so okay, okay. Look, look at that, right? Oh, you have like a crazy. ton of different images <laughs> for the 1860s. But for the 1950s, it's pretty much exactly the same image of like, oh, everyone lives in the suburb. It looks exactly like this, right? It's a very and like, specific image. And I think it's very similar for everybody. I, I think the reason uh, or a good reason for that is because in the 1950s is when television started to boom. Like mm-hmm. that's when like it went from at the beginning of 1950, maybe 10% of people had television in their homes to the end of 1950s. It was 80% of people had televisions in their homes. So then it was just like, we can get out a specific image of what every everybody's supposed to subscribe to, you know? So And, yeah. and whether it's even... For those who are like, well, that sounds like conspiracy theory. What if it wasn't even intentional? Isn't everybody watching the same shows? I wasn't even saying it was intentional. No, yeah, but I'm just saying, even if it wasn't intentional, that's the side effect. Of there was it. only one fucking show you could watch. Right? Like, there's there's no reruns. Yeah, like <laughs> you had to tune in. That's that's how television and movies and commercials work. Like, hello, like you you're all looking at the same image. Why wouldn't you have the same image in your head? Like, if you all listen to the same song. Don't you have the same tune jingling in your mind? You know? Anyway, what are we going to show, okay. Kim? Uh, you find I'm going to show it now. Yeah. Okay, now, now, now think of the image of 2060, okay? Or 2050, oh. 2060. What, what oh. image you got in your mind? Uh, there's the the one image, the you will own nothing and be happy image. Yeah, yeah. There's there's another, like, even more dystopian. It's very, vir- <laughs> it's very virtual in my mind. You know, it's very yeah. like not re- physical. Like, Everyone put in the life, comments, what's but... your vision of 2050? Let's see it. All I'm seeing is a bunch of avatars. <laughs> I'm it's like, like seeing the avatar this, movie. I'm seeing like cows, chickens, <laughs> yeah. sourdough bread, raw milk. Mm, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Hanging out, campfires, big yeah. groups. I like, like this. You know, having fun. That's That sounds like the 19... 19- 80s cam what are you yeah, talking yeah, about that's, like that's, that's 1950s cam. We're back to the 80s <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> where are we in the back 1920s? To 1800s. what's going on yeah <laughs> all right let me yeah. share this go ahead go. Uh, yeah, I'm getting vibes of like how like Klaus Schwab will do those announcements and he's like you will must get the vaccine but I'm picturing it as uh Cameron is actually the face where Klaus Schwab but Cameron's like you will get a chicken and cows and have a homestead. <laughs> you know, because I know Cameron, you want to be the. I know you want to be this cult leader, Cameron. So, oh yeah, I'm I just I giving you props that. for that. Nice. Um, so I just looked this up real quick because I didn't know. Here's the yeah. book that I'm showing here. Oh wow! It's grade five. Wow. Which is eight to twelve year olds. Okay, so just so you can see that, and I should have my sound working. But I just put, here's the first 116, 118 is the next page she's reading. Yeah. Um, and this is my daughter, Seneca. She's four years old. And she was already reading this. I just said, hey, can you read it again for me? Like she was doing this on her own. This wasn't me asking her to do it. And I said, hey, can you read it again? I want to do a video real quick. So she was already like, I'm, I was thinking I was finishing my dinner or something. I was sitting there and she was sitting over there. She was reading it at dinner. And then so she came to sit next to me and she wanted to read. Okay. So cool. Cause she was like, she was like, can you read to me? And I was like, well, right now I'm trying to finish my dinner. So I'll read to you in a little bit. And she was like, well, I'll just read then. 
I think that's how it is. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so let me play this <laughs> so you can follow along. Yeah. Your name seems so. Did you see me? Yes. Why are you smiling for you? She walked down in the fire. Then the, the next day, when Polly, she saw him, Polly and I called out. It's not as lovely a day as yesterday, but it's still rather nice. Oh, don't you think? Oh, e oh, hope. The man grunted and walked quickly on his way. But the third time that Paul greeted him, she stopped short. He, t he stopped short. Then he heard, child, who are you? And why do you speak to me every day? I'm Paul and a witter. And I, and I thought you loved them. Lonesome. Lonesome, yeah. Lonesome. I'm so glad you saw Now we've met. Only, I don't know your name yet. Well, of all the men continuing the walk. But then the next time Pollyanna saw the man, which greeted him with a bright smile. It isn't so nice today, is it? She called out to him. I'm glad it didn't always rain. The man didn't even, even go to turn his head this time. He quickly instead, keeping his hands behind his back and his shoulder very straight. Pollyanna decided that he hadn't heard her. The next day, she spoke more loudly. Hello, she choked. I knew that it isn't yesterday. It's so lovely to see the sunshine again. The man stopped in front of her and sped around toward the river scout. All right, so that's just where I stopped the video recording. Oh, that's cool. That's um, cool. Wow. But like, she can you see she's not sounding out the words? Right. She There's only one word faster. she sort of like hesitated on, which was lonesome, but you, yeah. she still knew it. Yeah. She's reading very fast. She's even reading faster than like the words are. Uh, and um, you can tell she understands. Just, just anybody's going, well, is she comprehending? Like you can tell the way she's reading with emphasis. She spoke yeah. more loudly this time. Hello, she chirped like, and she's like doing it with more emphasis. Like she's yeah. reading the book just like anybody who understands what it is. Right. She's four no, years it, old. It's so cool. It's so cool. That I was mean, a fifth grade, eight to twelve year old. So what is fifth grade? Is that twelve? Twelve year old. Uh, fifth grade is yeah, eleven, twelve. Eleven, twelve. Yeah. yeah. So that's the level that she's because when I I posted a picture of her reading it at dinner on Facebook, and I was just like, this is the kind of stuff Seneca is reading right now. And I know the back chat, someone's going to be like, well, you know, you're just posting like a picture of her. Maybe she picked up that book. You know, if parents do shit like that, like they'll, sure. their kid will like pick up a phone, like, oh, look, you know, it's like, they're talking on He's the phone grandma. like a baby or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'm like, you know what? Okay. Let me, uh, let me post this video of her actually doing. And, you know, and it wasn't like, oh, I need you to do this video. She was already reading it out loud to me. And I was like, Hey, can you just read that page again? Yeah. Right. And what's cool is she'll read the book and then like, She'll ask me like, why did he say that? Or why did he do that? Or why did she do this? And then I'll explain to her the more context, right? Yeah. So it's not that she's going to have all the context necessarily, but you could see she's able to actually read that. She's four years old. So anybody who's like, well, you just have this one kid, you know, all kids are different and, you know, some are good at reading and it's like, now we replicated it again. Right. And yeah. we'll do it again with Caius and, we'll do it again. and, and you guys are going to do Aristotle it. And 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 yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it, it's funny because we were talking about like, um, I've been telling this to people because I think it's just a, such a funny story where, you know, Gaetan was talking about like, Juanilo is 13 months and he only knows 18 of his letters. I'm like, where else can you hear that? Like, On what planet is anyone being like, well, he only used 13 of his letters at, or 18 of his letters 18. at 13 months. Like, yeah, it's like, if oh, it was a like kindergarten and they knew 18 of the letters like that well, where they could see it and immediately know it, they'd be like, wow, this kid's a genius. <laughs> right, 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 right. And it's funny because like Seneca, she's, she's four years old, four years old. I've never seen a four-year-old reading at that level, like a book like that, like maybe a picture book, maybe, you know, you know, something like really for a first grader, but she's reading like a chapter book that's just straight words. And it's basically meant for like a fourth or fifth grader. And, and she's actually understanding it. And I know she understands it because, um, 
because <laughs> sometimes if I'm talking to her, she'll be like, I'm Pollyanna. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, like she'll tell me about the story and like, and she'll tell, Hey, you're, you're supposed to do this. And I'm like, Oh, okay. All right. There's this one part where, um, we were reading some more of it last night together at bedtime and, and I was just reading to her and it was like, obviously later in the book. And it was talking about, she, uh, Pollyanna brought home this boy to like live at the woman's house where she lives, like her aunt's house or whatever. And they set up the situation before where she had brought home a cat that had like, you know, like out on the street and like a dog out from the street. And like the woman kept accepting these things. And at one point she was like, well, I figured you would let the boy here because you let Fluffy and Buffy and they're just dogs and cats. And I go, um, or they're just cats and dogs or whatever it was. And, and prior to that, they had mentioned Fluffy and Buffy. And I said to Seneca, I was like this. So this was like a page before. Um, I was like, I wonder which one is the cat, which one's the dog. And we were like, she was like, I don't know. It doesn't tell us. Cause I asked her, like, do you know? And, um, so anyways, the next page, it says this point about fluffy and Buffy and they're just cats and dogs. And she goes, Oh, fluffy must be the cat because it says fluffy and Buffy. And then it says cats and dogs. Oh, wow. Right. So she's like, she was wow. thinking as we're reading about the point <laughs> and then connecting that point like that yeah. four years old. And she's reading it herself. Like it, and dude, like she does this all the time. Cause like a lot of times when it's like nighttime, I'm like almost falling asleep, you know, and like really tired from the end of the day. And I'm reading to her. And even if I'm reading one of my books out loud to her, cause like, we'll read a bunch of her books. And then eventually I'll just be like, okay, now it's time for you to lay down and just try to actually sleep. And I'm going to read my book out loud, but she'll like, look, and if I miss a word, or like I say, the, cause you know, sometimes you'll just paraphrase something when you're reading out loud or whatever. Right. If yeah. I do that, like she always will catch it. Cause she's actually reading along with me. That's or, or if like, sometimes you just misspeak wow. cause like you're tired or whatever. She'll be like, um, like it said thing. And it sounded like I said, think. And she goes, Cameron, she starts laughing. She goes, you said think. And I was like, what, why would I say that? And she was like, look, it says thing. And I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, maybe it sounded like I said that, you know? So yeah. she's like, I, I want to play one more thing. Katie just sent me this. Uh, like okay. literally, I think she's watching. So she was like, play this on the podcast. Let me, let me do this one real quick. I haven't seen it. I just watched the beginning of it. So, okay. okay. Seneca has two words from her stuff that she did today that Oops. she wanted to spell for me. Yeah. And I asked her if I could make a video. Can I make a video of you doing that? Yes. Okay. Spell your words. Okay. But don't. Uh huh. D E L I C A T. Wow, delicate. That was now, great. Now, wow. now the big one where that that one. Okay, that go ahead. One. So D uh -huh. E D E P E N D E N T. Do you know what that word is? What? Did you get the computer to tell you? Um no. It was dependent. 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 Or dependent. Sometimes dependent. we say D or D. Dependent. dependent. Yes. Dependent. Very nice. Dependent. Did you also learn, what else did you learn? Um. Did you learn any other words? I did. Which ones? Um. Degree. Degree. Could you spell degree? D. E. R. I mean, G-R-E-E. -E. Wow, that's awesome. That's so Katie. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for spelling. Yeah. <laughs> Do you notice how she notices her mistakes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She but, did it when we, she was reading the book. She said something like she walked on quietly or whatever. And, she and goes, then she caught herself. He, like she went back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you don't really have to. If she had kept going, I would have stopped and said, Hey, let's go back real quick. But you could see, she's like able to catch herself and, and correct those points because when she does her techno tutor without spilling too much, like it shows you like, okay, what was the mistake? Here's the correction. So they check those things, right? So they have this, they don't, they're not afraid of making a mistake. They just know they can correct it, you know, learn from it, whatever the thing is. Right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. how cool is that? Wow. And then that like, so cool. we read all the time, obviously with them. Um, and I'm always reading at night and Katie's always reading something like she's got some book on like how to 
treat animals with herbs and stuff, you know? And now I, 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 I was really interested. I opened up the other day. There's a section on, on herbs for bees. Like you can plant herbs that mm -hmm. the bees like. Right. So I was like, damn, I should get some bees. I think that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and before i had like wanted to do it and i had when i went somewhere and this guy had bees and stuff and i was like i don't know it seems like a lot of stuff but like um but then i was reading more about it like in this book and it's like an older book i guess and it was like um the, the woman was saying that her father had always told her like if the honey doesn't burn your throat or no no a sign of like a productive hive that's like really well kept and healthy is that the honey will burn your throat wow. not like extremely but it'll yeah. you know have sort of like a like almost like a gingery i would guess like yeah, kind of yeah, burning, yeah. you know what i mean she yeah. didn't really describe it she just said that and uh she said like when they would when they would have their honey like people would be like oh you put peppers in this and there's something and they'd be like no we, we didn't but it's because and and so anyways i'm looking at that and i'm like man that would be so cool because i get local honey and it doesn't even come close to burning my throat right. he said the yeah. reason why it's not because it's bad. It's just they they feed white sugar to the bees. Mm. And so it doesn't have the same like level of of all that stuff. And so um, and they, she also was making this cool point about um, people will they will they'll select the queens that they want to keep and they'll mm. select the one that's more docile so that they produce bees that won't attack you. Oh, okay, and she was yeah. like, but then they won't be easily able to defend themselves against predators and other things like that. And there won't be as hardy. So she's like, just wear protective clothing. Don't Where would you keep to, them? Like, force it. And would you keep them like way in the back in the forest or something? Or like, how do you think about that? Um, I mean, you know, like that section that's like cleared. I don't know yeah. if you remember. It's like kind of in the back. Yeah. I think there was like used to be a pipeline there or something. There's like a cleared section. So you could put them back there. Like by you know. where you drive the ATVs back behind the house That's or what more I mean. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't really thought too much about it. <laughs> so but... it's like on the ATV trail, there's like one section where you have to drive really fast. <laughs> 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 but the property actually goes back behind that too. So you could put it. Okay. There, That's know. really cool. And you could probably wow. plant like, like a little garden out there for him or something. I don't yeah, know. Right. I haven't really thought too much about it, but when I was reading That's all awesome. that, I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. And like, you know, yeah, I am just buying honey. And even though it's local raw from a farm, like, they're still, I'm sure, doing stuff to increase their productivity and make it easier and all that stuff. And like, we right. eat a lot of honey. So it'd be really cool. I'm sure we could, I don't know how much would require to like feed our needs, but I just, I don't know. For some reason, beekeeping sounds pretty cool. I remember I had a client when I lived in Houston um, that they had bees and they like, this was like in Houston, like in, in their like backyard. neighborhood. What? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. I mean, they had a pretty big yard, but you know, it was like Jeez. in the, one of the wealthier neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah. They just had a little beehive there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought neighbors so got random, them random at the time. Yeah, the Estonian good. lady, she strikes again. Yeah, she uh, she got like these white boxes and yeah, I don't know, but she makes the honey and it's so good and it's like and, yeah, you get a whole nope. jar at a time. And the in there they said you could paint it blue. The, apparently, blue is the bee's favorite color, but apparently they're white. And I learned this about whitewashing. I always thought because because when I painted the kids' beds that I made, I I like watered down some latex paint and I made it look whitewashed. But I didn't know whitewashing is actually, it's like a limestone. It's not a latex paint. It's like a limestone treatment that you're doing on the wood to make, to like make the wood last longer. Mm. Maybe I'll, I don't, I didn't know that. Cause I, and I only connotation I had to it was Tom Sawyer. Yeah. It's either Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn. I can't remember which, but you remember like, if you ever read those books, like yeah, there's yeah. a part where he's like whitewashing a fence or whatever. So he's like he's and, painting a fence. And, <laughs> then and I always just thought they were do. doing it because you didn't really need it to look good or something, but it's not normal paint. It's actually a limestone treatment. So okay. anyways, that only came up because in the book they were saying you could, you would just do this like limestone treatment, but they said, but then you can put like a blue dye into it. Cause that's their favorite color. There's just so much cool things you can learn when you start looking at things from a different perspective. I don't know what, yeah, I guess I had to do with reading. Yeah. So we're always reading. See, hmm. There you go. So yeah, I'm learning shit, right? And like, dude, like Max, um, he's 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 really into mythology right now. Mm. So he's got all these books that we we started out with one book. It just happened to be on our shelf. And he started reading it, and then we went to this bookstore. We got more books. I ordered some books. He's got all these books on mythology, and he's telling me all about like Hindu mythology, Japanese mythology, Hawaiian. That is mythology. so cool, dude. It's like I it's like an encyclopedia 
uh, like alphabetically with just different terms from mythology, like different gods and stuff. And he's like reading about all of them. And, uh, and he's like, I, he's like, I really like Hindu mythology right now. So he's telling me about like, cause one time we were playing and he was like, let's play mythology. And I was like, okay. I was like, are you, um, I said, are you Vishnu or Krishna this time? And he goes, Cameron, Krishna is just one of the incarnations of Vishnu. <laughs> 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 like he can tell you all the point and like Cindy the other day what was she saying she was like oh max was like they'll just be talking about it and they'll he'll be like you know zeus is actually the or no who is he saying uh heracles is actually the half son-in-law quote son-in-law of zeus and i was like or, or father-in-law or something like the, it was something that didn't make sense. And I was like, how do you figure? And he goes, well, because Heracles's father was Perseus, or I, I might have it backwards, but whatever it was like was Perseus who had a child with Hera and Hera was married to, and he was like this whole like complex point of how he was like thinking about it. And it wasn't something that was in the book. It was something he was thinking about, mm. about how, like how complex it was and everything. And I was like, well, is it like he had this son? He, I forget the question he asked. And he starts telling me about Athena and how Zeus, Athena came out of Zeus's head and yeah. like all these different points. And we were talking about this. Uh, we were talking about all these different things and we were having this conversation about like, do you see how, because they'll be like, they'll be like, this is weird. They'll be like, um, so-and-so had a kid with this goddess but this goddess is the sister of that god that doesn't make sense and we're like yeah it doesn't make sense like this one came out of this one's foot you know and all that and i was like talking about the whole thing about jesus right and like how he was born from a virgin and all that and then max was like we were talking about was like oh all of that is just christian mythology yeah. it's just mythology you start to see it so he's getting this exposure really early on of how obviously these are all just different stories of different cultures and Christianity is just another one of this culture. And clearly these things that are supernatural, they don't make sense. It's just, it's just mythology. It's not real. It's like their way of trying to explain something, but not even trying to explain it. It's just a story. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like when you listen to um, like Rapunzel, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, Cindy's really into Rapunzel right now, right? She hasn't seen the Disney movie, right? But she has, uh, they have, they have, um, a book of fairy tales. And I don't know if it's Hans Christian Andersen or which one that it comes from, but they have a few books of like fairy tales and stuff like that. And she's telling me about Rapunzel. And so we read the book and she's telling me about it. Like all the parts of the details I didn't even know about that. Like Rapunzel had these parents and then like the dad was in this garden and he took some lettuce and it was the lettuce of a witch. So she was like, you know, you have to give me this girl that, you know, you're, you're going to have this baby and so forth. And it was really interesting because there was this one point where it was like the, the, for those of you who don't know the story, like Rapunzel has this long hair. She's up in this tower. There's no way to get into it because the witch sealed everything off and she has to let down her hair to let the witch up. Dude, okay? Spoiler alerts. Come on. In the night. Huh? No, no, no. The, oh, witch, the witch wants to go in and out. She like owns oh. this girl basically. Oh. And they never explain why, but um, she lies to Rapunzel because Rapunzel's like, why do I have to stay here? And she's like, well, because the world outside is really bad and evil and everybody's really mean. And so I'm protecting you. So she's lying to the girl. Right. And it was really cool. Cause we were talking about it last night and with the kid, I was talking with the kids about the story and we were looking at this point of like, I was like, see, I was like, what happened was the parents. So basically the dad, um, he was taking all this lettuce from this garden because the wife wanted lettuce and the witch caught him and was like, Hey, that's my lettuce. And he's like, I'm sorry. My wife just really needs this lettuce because we don't have any food or whatever it was. And she's like, well, you can have all the lettuce you want, but you have to give me something in return. He's like, whatever you want. My wife wants to I'll give you anything. And she goes, all right, well, your wife is pregnant. She's going to have a girl. And when she does, you have to give me the girl. Right. And he goes, well, I'm not going to do that. That's insane. Right. And she's like, you already agreed. He's like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? He goes, you said you would do anything. You already agreed. And he's like, fuck. So takes the lettuce home child's born they're like we're not going to give him the girl they build this tower they put her in there they like guard it and everything right 
but eventually the witch comes calling and she must somehow i forget exactly how but she like banishes the parents somehow like she's magical or whatever so now she's got this tower she seals off all the exits you can't get in or out so now she's got the girl in this tower and i was explaining to the kids you see how the parents they spent all their focus trying to protect the girl from the outside world of like the witch coming to get her and they never told her about the world because they kept her in this tower so that was how the witch was able to come manipulate her because when she tells her later she's like the world is terrible it's really bad so the girl's like okay i mean so when the night eventually comes and climbs up the hair because he watches the witch doing it she's like who are you he's like i'm a knight he's like i'm gonna take you out of here let's let's get out of here and she's like what no like the world's really bad outside and Mm. i was talking to the kids about it and i was like do you notice Katie and I, we don't lie to you about the world. We don't hide things from you. Like, cause you guys know about Disney and like, for example, they will be like, um, they'll talk about Rapunzel or, or not Rapunzel, but like the little mermaid, they read that story, the Hunch Christian Anderson. And I was like, yeah, that's actually a Disney movie. There's a Disney movie called the little mermaid. That's the one I learned. Cause I didn't know all this stuff that this happened and this happened. And like, there's like a part where like the witch cuts the little mermaid's tongue out. <laughs> Did you know that? Like in the actual story, right? And, no, I thought um, she just couldn't speak. <laughs> right. But uh um but I was, you know, and so she'll so Seneca will be like, well, what is what did theirs look like? So we'll look up the picture of it, right? But we're not gonna watch the whole movie or anything. And but my point is I was telling them, like, we we explain things to you about the world. So you're not gonna go out into the world when you're older and be like, you lied to me about everything what there's Disney, what there's this, there's that. I'm like, we tell you about all that stuff. Like we're not hiding the things from you. Right. You know, like, obviously we're not going to show them things that would imprint on them. Right. But we explain, we explain, we explain. So it's like words. What most parents do is they just give the kids, the images, the music, the sound, all that. They don't give them the understanding. Cause when you start to look into it, like, um, it's like, oh man, I want to sing like the little Disney songs to the kids because I liked those when I was a kid, right? And then you're like, sha-la-la-la, don't be shy. You know, you gotta kiss the girl. And you're like, dude, what the fuck (laughs) is this programming kids with? And then like, and then what about that one where he's like, under the sea, da-da-da-da. You know, and he's like, uh, uh, under the sea, we play all day. Under the sun, they slave away. Right. And it's like programming that, oh, you need to stay down here because you could just play all the time. But I was explaining Mm -hmm. to the kids, but there's a king because her father's like King Triton. Right. And they have like the whole system. So clearly that's not true that they just play all the time like that. He's lying to her because his job is to keep her in line. He's like he's like works for the father to protect her from going up and whatever and all this stuff. Right. And so we were just talking about also she's like, but why does she want to go to the land? Like, because she's participating in this point of like, like something is special and it's being hidden from her and she wants something different. You know, like we talked about like the, what is the pattern that it's impulsing in the child? Yeah. Right. So you really start to look into it and you're like, man, this is really fucked. Like all these stories that are, that children are impulsed with. So we just explain everything. Our kids have a high vocabulary and it's cool because they can start to see through like, what doesn't make sense? What makes sense? You know, like people talk about, oh, you didn't give your kids Santa Claus. So like, they don't have magic. And it's like, I'll, I'll tell one more quick story. Like we went to the playground the other day and there were some kids there and there was like 11, a kid, almost 11, a 10, I think it was like almost 10 or t- almost 11, another kid who was like similar age. And then like an eight year old. And Max was like hesitant to go play with them because they were kind of doing their own thing. I was like, just go talk to him. Like, I'm sure they'll want to play with you. Right. So he goes and he starts talking to him and everything. And they're immediately like, how old are you? What grade are you in? Right. And he's like, well, I don't go to school. And I hear the kids going jealous, you know, (laughs) and like, right. And uh, so they're not really doing anything, but then like Max is like, let's play a game. And they're like, well, what game? And and they're like, well, we could play tag. And Max is like, oh no, you've played that a bunch of times. Let's play a different game. They're like, well, what? And he's like, well, let's play a game about mythology. Okay. Like, like, you know, um, uh, like okay i can be we could you can be one of the heroes and the kid's like superheroes like what superheroes and max is like no not that kind of a he- superhero like a hero like hercules you know like in, like or or heracles and he's like talking about all these different things and the kid this one kid who's kind of like obviously like the, the quote dumb kid 
you know, like the kid who's like not as good at school or whatever. Because sure. there's the one older kid who's like kind of the more the smarter kid. And you can tell he's really responding to Max. Like he's listening to what Max is saying. He's asking questions. Whereas the other kid's kind of like, oh, stop talking about that. Like, I don't want to do, you know, he's like kind of more like the, the bully mentality, right? And uh, Max goes, hold on. Can you guys wait here just a moment? I'm going to go get something. So he comes to me. He's like, can I go get in the car? And I'm like, sure. So I unlocked it. He goes, comes back. He's got his mythology book and he brings it over to them. And he's trying to, he's like, look, let me explain to you what these things are so that way they can play the game. Yeah. yeah. And the one kid's like, I don't want to learn a bunch of stuff right now to like do a game. Like he's like complaining. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Max is coming over to me and he's like, he's like, you know, the one kid is pretty cool, but there's like the other kids just like reacting to what, everything I'm saying. And I'm like, well, look, partly what's happening right now. Cause I'm observing the whole thing. I'm like, he's reacting because I could just tell based on his character, like he's not very good at learning. Like his parents didn't support him effectively. So he's feeling like he has to learn stuff. And where does, what does he associate learning with? And Max goes, school. And I'm like, right. So they're kind of, a, he's associating that. So he's like feeling like he has to like be in school now in, in that. So Max is like, oh, and he immediately goes over to the guy. He's like, guys, even though we're learning something, it's not like learning in school. It's not like that at all. And he's like trying to persuade them. Like, wow. and he spent like the whole hour talking to the one kid and then trying to get the agreement with the other kid and like going back and yeah. forth and trying to persuade and all this stuff. It was so fascinating to watch. And it's like, he's six. That's so awesome. You That's know, so and cool. like, he's way over these kids vocabulary level. The 11 year old so was kind of close, but it's like, um, uh, he's like almost double his age though. <laughs> yeah. What, like when ended up, ha- did at some point, did they want to come play or like, did it shift into something else? It, uh, there, there was a point where like another like family member arrived and the kids went over there for a bit and they came back and like Max kept going over and like, eventually it's like, you know, the kids have to go or whatever, but they, they were kind of playing a little bit. And then, and then like the kids would, you know what it was? It's like the kids were just standing around. And so because they didn't really understand everything Max was the contextualizing, it would just devolve into them just standing around and him kind of like coming back to me for a while and then going back to him trying to persuade again. And it's like, they were just sitting around doing nothing. And at first when we got there um, and he was considering whether he should play with them, I was like, you should go, go talk to him. Right. And just introduce yourself and say, ask what they like to play a game. And the one kid had a phone and he pulled his phone out. Right. And this, mm-hmm. Max was just observing it. And then the other kid had a phone. And I could see the grandma over here, like on her phone. Mm. And I was just talking to Max. I was like, he's like, oh, well now they have their phones out. So they don't, they probably just want to play games on their phone. And I was like, yeah, these kids, I was like, they, they, they probably in school and they have these phones. And I was like, they're way too young to have phones. Like it's yeah. just, and then I could hear the, I could see the grandma was like listening to us. Cause we were kind of closer to her. Right. So she goes over there and takes their phones. <sighs> right not like in a mean way but just like you know gets their phones from them right yeah, yeah, yeah and then she comes and talks to max for a minute and she's like oh yeah i bet they would play with you you know right and then <laughs> so anyway so eventually he goes Shout over out grandma. But yeah. it was interesting listening to them too because there was sometimes when max would say something like they were talking about whatever something and i would hear the kids go bro i you know or whatever and i'm like where did they learn that yeah. Right. They're in school. Like, why are these 10 year olds going, bro? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's interesting because Max doesn't talk like that. Right. He doesn't have that. He's in school. So he's getting the bro and this and all, you know. Yeah. It's really it's fascinating. A, That's funny because they're also small town country kids. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, but it's, it's that internet, internet. The, the phone. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Finds a way exactly. to get it. It's like a virus. Produce everything. You, wow. You're mentioning that point of like, um, santa claus and like the kids not having magic and and all this right and it's funny because i was talking about this with christine yesterday like this point of um you remember like as a kid somebody would say to you like oh you can't tell anybody your wish like you're blowing out candles and they're like you can't you can't tell anybody your wish or or it might not come true right and you're like "Uh, oh okay and you're like, is, is this a, is this a thing? you like, in your mind, you're like, is this, is this real? Are you messing with me? And okay, I'm, I'm just not going to tell anybody. Right. But then even as you get older, you still hold on to things like that. Where you're like, are you going to tell them? Well, aren't you afraid that if you say something that maybe it might not happen and like, Oh, right. It's in, it's in reverse. 
it, it's weird because it's How like, could you ever make your wish happen if you didn't tell people? But, but the thing is like most people, they'll pretend like, like on the surface, they're like, obviously that's not true, but underneath they act as if it is true. And they're like, they're actually afraid of it, you know? And it, I was listening, the specific context is listening to Collapse of the Money System by Bernard Coleman. And he talks about these divine forces that actually are directing everything, right? And I was seeing just the practical point within that is everyone accepts this divine force as like the superstition of, I don't really know how things work. And so, yeah, it could be anything. Any, anything could could spark this or that or whatever. And, and and you'll just go along with it, you know? And that's a lot of how we have people who are just willing to um, accept whatever they're being being told, you know, it, or, or, or better said, people who are willing to accept the projections of their mind. Because we were also talking about this as well, of how you'll look at somebody and you're thinking, they're probably thinking this. Or, or whatever the media has told you, like, oh, they're probably going to be upset if I tell them I'm not vaccinated, you know? And, and meanwhile, in their mind, they're like hiding the fact that they're not vaccinated because they're thinking, you know, the same thing about you. It's, it, but it's just a projection. It's not what they're actually thinking. But then you'll act as if this is a really big deal. And then you won't actually direct the point and speak out, you know? And so the superstition in essence, or what's unspoken, what's implied, what's, what's tacit, is running the system. Because you, you just like, you're afraid to, to speak out about it. And also because you taught your kids that from a young age by using these stories or Disney or, uh, you know, Santa Claus or whatever it is, by using that, you're actually teaching them to go along with these unspoken rules and never actually give them a clear explanation or understanding of it. Like Christina asked me today, actually on our walk, she asked me like, um, how would you describe to our daughter when we have our second kid, how are you going to describe to her like how the second kid got in there or how we're pregnant? Or whatever? And I just started giving, like, I would just describe all these details. Like, this is how it happens. And, you know, being like, just direct about this is how this happens where most parents would shy away from like, well, let's leave it at mommy and daddy love each other. And then because they love each other, a baby comes like that's confusing. That's not going to support. Like how would anything. you describe how a bee pollinates a flower? Would you be like, well, a bee loves a flower. And it's like, <laughs> why would you be ashamed about it? I you know what I mean? Like, I here's the want... physical process that occurs. Right. What, what's right. the big deal? Exactly. Because, because you know, like, there's aspects to it that you can't really explain. But you can even say to the child, like, when you're an adult and you're mating or you're having sex, like, it's also can be a pleasurable experience. That's a context you don't have right now. But right. when you get to that point, you'll understand that. And that's right. like, that's okay to explain. Like, why do you? But people are so fucked up emotionally and have all this shame that that's why they don't want to explain it. And that ends up creating more shame because they, the kids pick up on that feeling you have while you're speaking about it. Yeah. Even if you're like trying to protect them from whatever you think you're trying to protect them from, you're still imprinting them with the same shit you have. Yeah. And it's like, they feel that discomfort and then they get uncomfortable and then they're like, eh. <laughs> that's why we have self-forgiveness. Yeah. And you can build your vocabulary. Cause I bet you, most people don't really understand the full process of how not just sex occurs, but like reproduction, how the egg is fertilized, all these points. Like I guarantee, I mean, I know most people don't have any actual understanding of that process. Yeah. So they are not educated about it. And so it's like a mystery, right? Oh. And then you listen to constantly, we're bombarded with like music. If you listen to the radio, that makes sex like this really immature, flippant. It's just, it, it's weird because it's childish. Yeah. ironically you know what i mean like the yeah. whole thing about being in the club and you know or like you listen into like some rihanna song about well, i don't even know what she sings about but assuming it's about relationships or some taylor swift or whatever you know and it's it's this very childish immature version of what relationships and sex and all that stuff is 
And we're yeah. constantly being imprinted and impulsed by that. It, it's like the hype moments of like a Disney movie or whatever, where you see the relationship and you're like, and then there's this spark and this and that, whatever. And like, that's what all the songs are. It's like, where have you been all my life? Right? Like, <laughs> like, or like even the scenes where it's nothing to do with relationships, where it's like, I can do this. I can go like, I can, I can achieve something. And it's like this heightened sort of thing. Yeah. And it's like, that's not how reality is. There may be moments where you have to push yourself or something, but it's like, we're trying to escape the mundane parts by hyping up points, but then it kind of doesn't prepare you for the actual reality that you live in. And it also, it also takes away from life because they're, like life is mundane most of the time, yeah. it, but it, like there's a beauty. But the miracles, Drake. <laughs> what we'll about the miracles? That. We'll get to that. But there's a beauty in that, like <laughs> mundanity. You know, there, there's like, like when you when you can actually appreciate all the work that goes into a fucking plant that you're going to eat from. Like there is beauty in that. Meaning you can, you, you plant a seed in the ground, you water it. Yeah. It doesn't grow and sprout in one moment. And you're like, wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. That doesn't happen. It's like, it's not like chat GPT or fucking mid journey. Or it's not, it's, like, it's, wow. it's not like that. It's not instantaneous. It's not really exciting. It's this slow unfolding process of developing and developing and you continue to water it and you continue to make sure that the conditions are right. It's a, it's a persistence. It's a constancy. And it's also, it's just a, things have to develop in succession. And so many people have been abused with this media, like even just watching those movies in the nineties, which today would be considered like, Oh, that's a slow movie. This movie is going slow. Like, where's the action? Where, Like when's something going to happen? And, even more so today, it's just like, oh, you get a quick 30 second fix and now you on to the next thing and you're like, I need my next fix. I need my next fix. It's it's abusing that point within everyone to actually be a part or, or, or appreciate life and the, uh, the process that it takes to develop everything. Everything takes a process to develop. You as a human being take a process to develop. The plants, the food that you eat takes process to develop. And even creating something, creating a business, creating a relationship, all of that is a process to develop. It doesn't happen instantaneous. And everybody wants the instantaneous fix. You know? And if you've been doing the, your relationship for 10 years a certain way, wrong, like in a not best way, it's not going to be suddenly, it's going to be fixed overnight. Right. Because you're working against all the inertia. You know, like I had somebody reach out and they were like talking about this trouble they were having with one of their kids. And it's like, they were, I could tell, I mean, they were explicitly saying it. They just want like, what's the thing to fix it. Right. And I was like, well, have you investigated how you created that relationship with them? And they were like, yeah, I know. I, 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 uh, I know I, I, it's, it's me. It's because of me. And like, it was, and I was like, you're just blaming yourself. I'm asking you to actually investigate how you created it so you can figure out how to walk it back. So not just be like, oh yeah, it's all me. It's all my fault. It's like, no, like actually look at how you created it. People want the quick fix. I mean, that's natural if you've been programmed to impulse that way. Yeah. You know, like I get why people want the quick fix. We all want that. Obviously, ideally we'd want the quickest solution in the quickest amount of time. Of course, why not? But it's just that, if that's not how it actually works, that's the problem. You know, if it works that way, great. But in a lot of cases, that's not how it works. You know, what I really appreciate about me coming into this community and getting TechnoTutor and getting started with all of this is um, when we were on the phone, Ken, you were just like, look, what if it doesn't change for seven years? Like you're consistently applying yourself every single day and nothing changes for seven years. And I, I was telling Christine about this last night. I was like, I looked at that and I was like, well, I've already invested five years into trying to do things and nothing's changed. I'm not saying it would never change if it took right. that long for it to actually change. Right, you know? right, right, right. And I was just like, you know, another seven years, I could sit here and complain like that's too long, but like 
the time's going to go by anyway. And know? when it goes by, it seems like it was fast. It, it does. Honestly, I, mean, I almost have a seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. 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 From the time Katie was pregnant Matt, in, uh, to now, Matt, it has been seven years since we started, you know, became parents before, Ch- you know, the child was born, obviously, but. This is funny, actually. Wow. Well, and then I, looking I, at I, seven more years when Kai is seven. Had you know. TT basically about as long as Max has been born. You know, that's, yeah. that's interesting. But um, that's like, that's real change is like, it's not the fast, quick thing. That's what makes it so awesome because it's it's like a, it's like it can't then revert. I mean, it can revert if you you know like Drake. If you were to just go fucking wander off to fucking Argentina again and go chasing you know how to be a foodie and go get go get drunk, yeah, it would revert. But also, you have the inertia now, and that's what's cool. It's like in this process, you do develop that inertia. Mitchell, where I don't have it to learn makes... how to be a foodie. <laughs> oh yeah, I already so am. A foodie. You already are. Mitchell has, I Mitchell has real, to learn. That's why you said that. I want to add this point real quick, Mitch, which is like that the change when it can occur, it can seem to happen very quickly. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's going to happen immediately. And and for different people, there's a difference between different immediate stages, yeah. versus. But but no, what I'm saying is like it, it can happen in a moment. In a moment. I mean, that's when the change happens. In a right. moment. It's just not necessarily in right now. Like immediately from the time you decided. Right. But there is that point where there isn't the point and then there is the point. And that's very quick. Like with Caius, um, he was not crawling when we thought he would should, you know, should be normally reasonably crawling. And then we took him to a chiropractor and he had a lot of tension in his muscles. Mm. So we supported him with that. And very quickly he started crawling. And then it's like, then he would be sitting up doing all that, but not really walking yet. And then he just started standing one day. And they started taking a few steps and now he's not even like, he, he'll take a few steps and sit down. Like he's not like walking around. So he crawls around still mostly to get everywhere. But like I went into the living room yesterday, he was playing with the kids in there and he had crawled up on the couch on the back of the couch, which is up against the wall and was trying to crawl up on top of the windowsill. You know what I'm saying? Like he went from like, he wasn't walking, standing very much at all. Like not that long ago to now he's like, crawling up, standing on everything. Like I was making some food the other day and he was like, we have a step ladder, you know? Yeah. It was like two steps. And he was like up on the top step, like looking over the counter, <laughs> right? Like, and I mean, that happened when you look at the time span, like really quickly. Yeah. Right. So the change can happen like that. It's just, then you have to put in all of the work. You have to put in all of the time and the, the effort and so forth, right? Just like with the garden analogy, like- yeah. You know, um, we have these uh, fruit trees that we planted, and this was last year, I want to say maybe September or August, Mm -hmm. because I remember specifically it was October when we were supposed to plant them. It was like you're supposed to plant them after October for some reason. I forget why, but um, so we had them for like maybe a month just in pots where I was watering them. And when I finally plant, so so we've had them, what, what would that be? Two almost six months, let's say, right? Mm-hmm. A little, probably about six months now. And there's, you know, there's no leaves, nothing on them. Right. And I just went out the other day and like the nectarine trees have leaves all over them, mm. you know? And like the, the grapevine that I had planted, I definitely thought it was dead because it seems so brittle, but it's got like little leaves all over it. Right. Mm. And the fig tree, it's got a little sprout on it, you know? And like, and the pear trees are doing really well. Um, there's a few where I'm not certain yet. They're still like not showing any signs and it's possible that they just die, but it's like, suddenly it's like for a long time, nothing. And then suddenly you're like, Oh wow. Okay. They just took time for it to get to that point. Right. Right. Yeah. I kind of interrupted gonna, you, Mitch. Yeah. Finish your statement, Mitch. <laughs> oh, I mean that that's like, that's just the fucking process. Like, okay. You know, that old phrase without a vision, the people perish. Hmm. It's curious. Everyone's take on that because it's like without a what? without a vision people will perish it's like without really it's just without really it's without vocabulary people perish because where does your vision come from is your vocabulary like some people may not understand that but it's like literally that's where your vision comes from and yeah. that's how you would communicate the vision too is through your words but it's cool because like on the podcast we'll 
we will if if you're looking for the vision you'll see it and if you're not looking for the vision you're just like oh see just, but the vision takes time to develop mm -hmm. also because you have to build your vocabulary and how long does it take to build your so like you're seeing yeah. with our son max and and with seneca like it may seem like man they are really advanced and they are but it's taken four years to get seneca to that point yeah that's still a long time Mm -hmm. You know, it, so it's not like it's just going to happen overnight. Suddenly you're able to see everything and have the vision and everything. That's what people are looking for, but that's not how it works. Like it takes time to develop and understand because you've been programmed for your whole life to see things a certain way based on a certain vocabulary. Yeah, no, that's actually true. Like I, I just remembered, you know, you had been sharing this vision with me from the very beginning and i was just like uh-huh yeah that's great no no yeah that's good cool. good for you uh, it took a while for see, me but to how could you see the world changing if you haven't seen yourself change yet yeah so no, that's it's let's say it's taking you what four years i don't know since we started since you got techno tutor mm -hmm. right what is what is it, like four years no it's been almost six six almost six, six years okay yeah six but years. then look at all the process you've gone through now you're yeah. married. Now you have a kid on the way, right? Yeah. So, and then it's like becoming more and more clear even to you because you're actually walking the process. I mean, same for myself, actually doing the things and then seeing that change and then supporting other people and seeing them change. And it's like, okay, I can see this many people can change. So now I could see that that many people could change beyond that. Right. So we understand when we talk about these things, a lot of times people are just gonna be like, what are you talking about? You know, but yeah, we get it. That's why there's, hundreds of podcasts that we episodes that we've done now what is it at now like 140 or something 136 136 yeah. right like we're saying the same thing all the time but what's also cool about this i was just thinking is like i'm for myself personally i'm constantly sharing all the different developmental points for our kids right. for ourselves like our own realizations you know all these points so you get to see that it's a process I mean, you can see for myself, even before we started the podcast, we did a video where it was just like, I was single, right? Yeah. Oh, and, and, yeah. then, um, and then now, like, you can watch my development where it's like, I got into a relationship, we got married, we have a kid on the way, like, it, it's, you're watching our growth as well, you know, and it's, it's cool, because it is a developmental process. You know, and we're documenting all of it. And uh, like, you, like you're saying, it's like, how can you see that? That was actually in one of the blogs um, that I had read recently uh, where Bernard was saying, you know, if you don't believe that the world can change, or if you don't see that, you know, the world can change or others can change, then you're going to act in self interest. If you right. just accepted the system as it is, and you don't see any point where anything can change, you are going to act in self-interest. That's it. Clearly, obviously, because you're going to like, well, nobody can change, so it doesn't matter anyway. That's the way that you're going to think about it, obviously, right? Um, and, you know, uh, that point about the, the miracles that you were saying earlier, right? Um, we were talking about this before the podcast, but just like that point of, okay, how many how many Christians <laughs> don't believe they could ever be? Well, can you just tell the story? Like I don't know if your mom would care. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell. Yeah, I don't no, think I don't she, would she would care. I don't think Isabel would care. Because um, like, it's a cool we, point of seeing how the what you would look at it and that process you have to go through. So we were just talking about like the history of mankind and just understanding um, how all these different religions have their theory or their story of how creation began. And the history of mankind makes it really series clear. Series from destiny. Yeah, series from destiny. Um, makes it really clear about, okay, this is all you really need to understand to understand how you got here and, you know, what's going on on this planet, right? Um, and it's really, like, it's really clear. Instead of having this, like, mythology, the Christian mythology, there's, you know, Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Hindu mythology. It's like, this and, is all you need to think about understand. it, all the stuff that, it's explained in destiny. The fact that like, uh, how can I explain it? We don't go on and on about, well, and then you must believe in the, this and the, that like notice how right. we never talk about that. It doesn't mean we're discounting. It's just like, it was just context. 
so right. that everything could be put in context. We weren't, we're not focused on the correct prayer or the, this, it's just like, you have really basic points of self-forgiveness, self-realization, correct yeah. yourself, yeah. like self-honesty. They're very basic things. It's not, and, and they're just a personal point of, of you applying yourself. It's not a, oh, but you didn't say the correct thing or you didn't wear the correct this or that, or, or there's no formality around that. Yeah. yeah so yeah, even yeah. though when you look at destiny and you say, well, it's all this, it may seem like another theology to some people on the outside. It's not because it, it's, it's not the, uh, it's not the point. It's just to help you get context for everything that's occurred right. so that you can say, okay, so now how do we focus here on the solution now? Not to get trapped in the, so now I must wear this type of robe on Sundays and I must say these words on this day. And it's like, people, that's like fucking Orthodox Christianity and all these other like fucking Christianities and religions. Because people it's like, consider religion as like a, like a ceremony. Like you partake in this yeah, particular ceremony, ceremony you participate on, in to yeah. prove that you're a good boy and you can go to heaven. Right. Right. But it also and, just goes to show like how primitive our understanding of like even why we're here or like why we exist or how our mind works and all that kind of stuff. Because I'm finally in the blogs or like Bernard's explaining like after death communication mm -hmm. and like psychology and like the heaven's journey is like talking about thoughts. And it's just like reemphasizing this point of like you have no fucking clue about yourself basically like you would just accept all the thoughts how you're like how your mind operates in the sense of like this is who you think who you are but it's like science if, if you really look at what the science research is saying and like psychology and stuff it's like and it's funny because someone yesterday that came to our clubhouse is studying like some sort some sort of like psychology or like cognitive some something or whatever and he was just he was literally saying that like all they're doing in his classes is like taking the current theories of psychology and just writing about them. Like, oh, right. like, what do we think about this? But there's no like conclusive learning anything to apply. Yeah. Right. Right. Where like destiny, it's like actually giving you this like really practical of like, no, this is how your mind works. And this is how you were programmed. And this is like the way that your body was structured, all these different things that it's like, oh, this makes sense. And now I understand even more why I need to like do this process because I am just this organic robot that is programmed and functions a certain way, but I actually can have direction and like how that process, the output of that. I process. just wasn't taught how to do it. So it's like, it's like you have a computer and you're actually learning. How is it physically structured? How is it programmed? How to change the program versus everybody else is like learning. Here's what TikTok is. Here's some YouTube videos. Here's Netflix. And you're like, they're just being entertained. Right. Not learning how the thing actually functions so you can direct it. So you want to debate about, do we have free will? Do we not have free will? It's irrelevant. That's like saying, does everyone know how to drive a car or not? It's like, well, do you know how to drive the car or not? Just because you're in a car doesn't mean you know how to drive it. You have to learn how to drive it. So just because you're in a body doesn't mean you have free will automatically. You actually have to learn how to direct yourself mm. without just being submitting to the programs that you were, that you were programmed with. So if you don't, you don't have free will. Right. You're not making real choices. You're not making real decisions. Right. There's a lot of context and I kind of yeah. sidetracked it, but you were talking yeah. about the point with. <laughs> so I'll give the reader's digest version. <laughs> but basically uh, what my mom had said was like, well, okay, well, what about this point in Christianity of like miracles? And uh, she was giving an example of praying over someone and um, that person coming to her and praying. Uh, and my mom just like, she said a prayer for her and then that person like threw up, you know, and, and like had this experience where they were just like, oh, thank you so much for doing that. And she said that person was changed after that, you know, and um, and I was I was basically bringing up well, we've seen other people where they'll do things where it's not prayer. They don't they definitely don't subscribe to like Christianity and, and all that but they'll do some, some ritual or something. They'll say some things. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, that other person's throwing up and they're having a reaction like that. And my mom's like, yeah, but that's just a reaction. <laughs> that's just a reaction. Well, to, her to point what they was were about, saying. doesn't that imply there's a God? Right. She was, she was saying the, um, the person that she prayed over, cause she wasn't 
like clearly it was God's presence. Right. Because, because he was saying like, I wasn't doing anything. I, I don't right. know. I was just saying, I was just saying a prayer and, and then God took over and boom. So it's just, like the effect, the effect must've been caused by God rather right. than something right. she did. And like, what we were talking about was, well, I'm just playing along, but it's like, how do you know the physical thing you were doing wasn't engaging something physically that allowed that person to release something like just right. because you don't understand the mechanism doesn't mean it was just God. Right. And I was joking. I was like, how do you know it wasn't Zeus? Right. Like, how do you know which God or what version of God it was? Cause you think like, you're just making this imaginative leap anyways. So how do you know what the explanation? Cause if the same person did that in fucking Saudi Arabia, they'd be like, it was Allah. And if the person did it in Japan, they'd be like, it was Buddha. And if the person did it in fucking India, they'd be like, it was Vishnu, Vishnu or, Kriva or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Was, you know, like, what? It would be a different Cameron, name. Cameron, Cameron. We all know Vishnu and it's is like, an embodiment oh, but that, of Krishna. It's all the same. <laughs> yeah. It's all the same, right? It's like, no, dude, go to an Orthodox Christian church. Go to a fucking, go to India and go look at the temples and all the different gods and shit. Like, yeah. go to the Japanese. They're not all the same. Right. Like, yeah. yes, I agree. Ultimately, at the end of the day, they are all the same, but they're all the same make believe. Right. Like, to them, they're not all the same. It's like to an Orthodox Christian, it's not the fucking same as the Hindu gods. You tell them that they're going to get pissed off. So you can't be like, but at the end of the day, it's all the same because the people participating it to them, it's not the same. So that would imply it's all invalid. Right. Right. And then you say, oh, it's. I was just going to say like, and then with Christian, it was funny though, because I just, I, I know a lot of Christians and Catholics. It's like, no, but this, this is like the God. And it's like, you don't think like on the other side of the world where there's like a million Muslims are saying the exact same thing about Allah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like 2 billion. But then you have yeah. a person who says like, well, but they're actually all the same God. And you're yeah. like, but then why doesn't everyone who's actually taking it seriously, why do they think it's not the same? If it's really all the same to me, it's all the same bullshit. That's really yeah. all it is. Yeah, because because then you just ask yourself, well, why the hell are we still even like debating about that or like talking? Like, why are people still playing that game when, meanwhile, on the earth, there's still kids right now fucking dying <laughs> right. from pre- preventable causes? Kids being sold into sex trafficking. Parents are hardcore into the religion. And- right. Yeah. Right. And and oh, Christine, but, but hold on. yeah, go ahead. Christine had brought up that point yesterday i'm just like okay well you're talking about miracles but like so god answered that miracle and then what about all the other kids yeah, why did that who person are in poverty it? who get raped all that stuff they're praying and they don't get their miracles answered and my mom was like well what people would say would be because you know god's working on his time and i was like that sounds like an asshole like his timing on, is but, like but he wasn't because you prayed right <laughs> So that see, but that's where you have to be self honest. Mm, Don't just point. say, "Oh, because it's working on its own time." That'd be so like why, if I walked into the room pray? and I was like, "Why are the lights off?" And you were like, "Oh, because it was raining." And you're like, "When <laughs> last week?" Like, okay, but why are the lights off? Oh, because it was raining. And you're like, okay, but that doesn't explain why the lights are off. I, yeah. I know it's a stupid example, but it's like you're just saying something. The first thought that came to your head, and you didn't question, "Well, does that actually explain it?" And, Does it and actually make sense? Such a huge part of this is because, and we said a, a while back in the podcast, but it's like because people, when they many times have this experience that they link with God, or when they're in a church and everyone's singing together and chanting, and you're in this like hypnotic trance state and you feel that euphoria or you feel that thing, they go, Oh, that's proof. I felt the spirit. When in reality, it's just showing that you f- can feel certain emotions when you're with a group of people or when you're focused on something. So that's exactly the the next point is she was just like, okay, well, what about those instances when, you know, I've prayed and said, you know, God, you know, open my eyes, you know, open my heart and, you know, guide me to those people who need help and, and use me as a vessel to help those people, you know, and, and I said, well, you know, it's really just the point of you had certainty and faith in something outside yourself that you call God, but you had certainty and faith in that. And then you just went and like, okay, you met somebody and you felt like, oh, this is the person I'm supposed to talk to. And then you go talk to them. Right. And, and then you act out of that certainty because you already 
you already said, okay, I'm certain that God's going to allow for this to happen. And then when you're presented with that opportunity, you're like, this must be God, right? You know, it's very similar to business and sales where it's like, if you're participating in depression and you're not moving yourself, it's like, oh, there's no one to talk to. But then the moment you're like, all right, you know what? I'm going to focus. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to start generating leads. I'm going to try to focus on my business. Like suddenly they're just coming out of nowhere, like everywhere. You're just like, oh, there's so much opportunity. It's just because you're deciding to focus on it. And yeah, you could yeah. say, oh, God's giving me all these leads. The universe is giving me all these leads. It's like, you're just focusing on it. Yeah. And then, and then what, at that point I made to you when we were talking earlier, I was like, I said, and I'll, and I'll let you take it from here. But I was like, Drake, how many more people have you helped them, supported them, touched their lives because you've made a decision, you've, you've got TechnoTutor, you started walking the process, you've made a deliberate decision to reach out to people and support right. versus before, maybe you can give that context about, yeah, I kind of skipped that. I forgot about that context you gave me earlier when you were like in church a long time ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Because when I was <laughs> when I was in church, like as a kid, I, I went to a lot of different churches, white churches, black churches. I was uh, in Green church churches. youth group and on Wednesdays. I, I lived at the church, right? Uh, and uh, and it was funny because um, I was basically like in church. Uh, you know, I was that kid who was like, yeah, God, you know, touch me, open my heart. <laughs> touch me <laughs> yeah it's like i'll send someone to touch you <laughs> yeah. right right but like open, open my heart and, and you know allow me to reach out to people and, and touch them and you know there would be moments where i would feel this like um oh this person's coming to me and, and this is the person that god's brought to me to influence their life or change their life or whatever and you know i'm just gonna say what what needs to be said and, and god's just gonna work through me right and, uh, but I've also had that experience, like just from using my techno team, right? it's just like, oh, this is the moment where I would usually, you know, fall away or, or ignore this person or whatever. And then now I have an opportunity to talk to them and really share with them. And it's been a hundred percent, you know, like I've helped way more people from actually deliberately, you know, sharing techno tutor with them than this nebulous, like, you know, I'm, God, just work with me or something. But I also noticed within myself of what made that possible back then anyway, was my certainty in it's being taken care of and letting go. Like there's this letting go or like, you know, like spiritual people will, uh, you know, claim that the universe is going to do something and they're just going to surrender to the universe, right? That they're like, you know, I'm just going to, you know, universe is just going to make this happen for me. And, and then they let go of their resistances to it. And then they're open to more opportunities. It's like you said, they stop being depressed about it. And they're just yeah, like, just let go of anxiety for a moment. Yeah. And then they, they just go and they're like, oh, look, the universe answered my prayer. You know, it's the same thing that all these people participate in, regardless of whatever God they're praying to. It's like, you'll have that certainty and that faith, but you won't allow yourself to do that for yourself. And I was like, oh, look, look you know, if, if you're just going to do that, then you can let go of the quote unquote, like, because why, why doesn't somebody just pray to themselves then, you know, and, and have that certainty within themselves. And that's really in developing my vocabulary. That's really like developing that point of confidence and certainty within myself. Right. But then also allowing myself to go to that point of uh, certainty within like, cause people can be, have faith and certainty in God. Like it's nobody's business. You ever walk into a church and you see these people like screaming and dancing and like, they're like certain, absolutely. Like you couldn't tell them anything. You couldn't show them anything different. They're just like, I, actually I was talking with a friend, I was talking with a friend and he was like, basically, um, confronted by his mother for the first time of like, you don't believe in God. And uh, he was like, no, no. Uh, and she's like, well, how do you explain, you know, all these people who they, they get moved by the spirit, you know, and they'll, they'll start like dancing or convulsing. And he's like, I thought, you know, these people are having like a seizure or like maybe like <laughs> maybe there's something wrong with you. Like you, you really got to go. Hold on. So I have to explain how people are convulsing in a church, but yeah. you don't have to explain why there's poverty. Right. 
Right, right, right. I think right. the burden of proof is on the person saying there's God, right. not the person who's saying there isn't. Right, right, right. And, and so it, it, it's <laughs> like funny. Explain these people convulsing. Yeah, but gotcha. It's like explain. Exactly. Well, that's not God. That's people. So it's exactly the that. Then. They're just doing it to themselves. Exactly that. They're, they're so confident in that, like, <laughs> well, come on. Look, look, my body is just going. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's God. Right. And like you're hypnotizing like yourself. You're, you're, you're focusing on it. You're building up that mental imagery. You're letting yourself go with it. Like how so is it funny too. Than, yeah. Cause like those like pagan rituals and stuff where you imagine like these like crazy people in the woods, like being like total pagans do the exact same thing. Exactly. 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 <laughs> so, okay. so then why wouldn't you allow yourself that certainty? I'm not saying you have to convulse or anything like that. Like, obviously not, but uh, allow yourself that certainty of like when you're praying to God, of just like, God, I'm calling on you. You, oh, I know you know what to do. Just show me what to do. And, and then like you believe, and then you go out there and you actually act on that. And you're like, okay, so why don't you have that certainty with yourself? Like, why don't you speak in the like mirror. that to yourself? Like, I'm calling on exactly. I'm, I'm talking to yourself. Like, I'm but, calling but on that, you. That, that was that within was yourself. That exactly. was the that was like the con of the whole thing, which is like, no, yeah. but you can't have that faith in yourself because you're Never. a sinner, and if you do that, you're going against God and you're going into Satan. But you can, you can't, you actually can do that. And I, I, I'm I know. saying this within the context of, hang on, because I, I want to make it clear. It's not like, okay, everybody just go out and do that. No, it's like, just within call the on yourself of, and it'll yeah. all happen. Yeah. Right. Within the context of you're building your vocabulary so you can actually understand the world around you. And you're also understanding with the context of doing what is best for all. That's the whole purpose of everything that we're saying. Always, right? It's within the context of, doing what is best for all. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to consider every moving part. You can't just be on the surface with just like, oh, but Kanye said that's racist. Like that doesn't make sense. You have to be able to consider, oh, you, you don't like feminism. Oh, you are, you are bad. You don't like women. Like, no, like you don't understand how feminism has, is just consumerism, which has just created these points within us, within our society where women are not actually being treated uh, with dignity and respect because they're being told, like how fucking insidious is this? You're telling a child, you're telling a child, cut off your dick, cut off your breast, cut, like how fucking insidious Men is that? Oh, you, you don't love the children. Like you're a fucking asshole, you're retarded. Like, yeah. so, so, okay. You have to be able to consider all these things of how it's actually going to impact. Oh, but you hurt their feelings. No, who gives a shit about your feelings? How can you it's hurt like, a feeling? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so let's, I don't know, somebody's going to be like, you were making fun of Asians that whole time. I am Asian. You've been watching too much on Benjamin, man. <laughs> you know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the, the whole point being, taking that responsibility of, educating yourself, building your vocabulary, understanding the world around you, understanding how all these moving parts work so that we can create a world that's best for all. And then giving yourself the authority, the confidence to actually go and make it happen. Stop participating in the fear, the doubt, the the like, oh, but I'm just a little old me. I can't do it. I understand the problem, but it's just, I, I it's hard for me. It's a challenge. I, I, it's going to take a long time. Stop doing that shit. Like, listen, this is a fucking great podcast. It's like, if you're serious about this, listen to this podcast, put what you need to put into your techno tutor and actually just go do it. That's it. That's it. All right. So I think we could wrap it up there. I think we're good. All right. See you guys. I think this one's called convulsions with God. Convul <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, John. Cool. Uh, see you next week. Any, any closing remarks? <laughs> no. Oh, go, uh, come to the event. Milk. There's there's still a few tickets left. <laughs> there's there's still two tickets left. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but come to the event. There's still two tickets left. <laughs> By the time to... you're listening to this on Tuesday, they're gone. <laughs> Get your ticket. One of one of yeah, one, one of, of the, the two. two tickets. Yeah, yeah, you have go. to fight over it. Um, but no, come convulse with us on the dance floor in San Diego. Nice. And nice. also level the fuck up because if. If you're still playing small and you're not at events with people and in person together, supporting each other, growing together, you're going to get, you're going to collapse along with the banking you're system. Not, you're not doing the whole system. Yeah. Dude, exactly. I think my, my entire clubhouse has tickets to the event 
everybody except for just one new person that came yesterday yeah right? a bunch more people bought yesterday i just saw it so oh it sick it, it might be that new guy <laughs> let's go all right all right cool well we'll Peace. see you guys there. Bye. Bye.